So let's start by doing a quick recap of yesterday's lesson of 4.4, uh, side, 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 and side, angle, side. Again, uh, the idea here is there's a certain p uh, amount of information that I need in order to prove that two triangles are congruent. Again, this is all about proofs, about proving triangles congruent. Um, uh, the first one that we had was side, 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 meaning all the sides are congruent. And we can see here in this figure that these two pairs up here in the top left here, they're congruent by side, 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 because th these sides are congruent, these sides are congruent, and these sides are congruent. So this is side, side, side. They're congruent by side, side, side. Okay, and the other one was side, angle, side, meaning two sides and the angle between them are congruent. So if I look at the bottom left here, we'll see that this, there's two sides here. See one and uh, this pair and that pair of sides. So there's two pairs that are congruent and the angle between them is also congruent. So this is side, angle, side. Now, if this angle had been congruent to say that angle, which is not between those two, then I could not say anything. There's no way for me to prove or disprove that these, if these are congruent in, in that case. So it has to be side angle between. It has to be true in both cases. That pattern has to follow. Okay, and then the two that we're going to get uh, today are um, <coughs> angle side angle and angle angle side. So if I look over here, I have an angle and then a side congruent and then another angle. So this is called angle side angle and it's key that this that I have two angles and the side between. Like this was two sides with the angle between. This is two angles with the side between and this is called angle side angle. And the last one I have angle angle side. Again, I would have two angles like I do here. This is one angle and this one right here that says that they're both right, so they're both right angles, they're both 90 degrees, they're congruent, okay? So this is congruent to that, that's congruent to that, and then the third side is out here, out here, but it's not between. So two angles and a side is also uh, congruent, we call this angle, angle, side. And if we look at this, if we look at this, if I have two angles, and one side congruent, it doesn't matter what the order is because it could be angle, angle, then a side. It could be a side, then the two angles, which would be the reverse way of doing this. Or the side could be between, which is angle, side, angle. So if I have two angles and one side congruent, automatically those triangles are congruent. As long as they ma uh, match up in order, they're congruent. And it's just one of these two, either angle, angle, side or angle, side, angle. It is not true that if you have two sides in one angle, that it will automatically be congruent. It has to be in this order, side, angle, side. There is no uh, other order that you can have two sides, one angle. Okay, so there's a summation. Four things. Side, 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 angle, side, and the new ones, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Now we're going to be, again, proving triangles congruent. 4.4 and 4.5 is all about proving triangles congruent using side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. And when I start a proof problem, what I like to do is label the picture. The picture helps me identify, oh, is it side, side, side? Is it side, angle, side? Is it angle, side, angle? Or is it angle, angle, side? What, what is true about these two triangles? So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the information they give me, and I'm going to label it in my picture here. So this is the picture that they gave me, and here are the two statements. S is the midpoint of QT. Okay, so midpoint means it cuts it in half, which also means that the two pieces, here's QT, these two pieces, QS and ST, they must, they must be congruent because it splits it in half. So I'm just going to draw a little tick mark here. It means that those two are congruent. Those two sides are congruent. Now the next thing they say is QR is, line segment QR is parallel to line segment TU. So here's... QR, here's TU, they're parallel, so I'll make the arrow symbol for parallel. And the thing that I sh immediately should recognize, anytime they tell you parallel lines, it should make you think some angles somewhere are congruent. I'm looking for congruent angles. 
because I have parallel lines. And remember, corresponding angles are congruent, alternate interior angles are congruent, ex alternate exterior angles are congruent. All that parallel tells you is something about angle relationships. So anytime they say parallel, think angle. Something's true about an angle. So as I look here, I'm going to look around. I'm going, okay, parallel lines cut by a transversal. And whoa, I have two of them. So I got to keep them uh, sort of sorted one by one in my head. So here's one transversal. Ignoring this one, I'm just going to look at this one. I can see that QRS, or angle R if you want to simplify that, must be congruent to uh, SUT, or just angle U. You could also call it that. Because they're along this transversal, they're on opposite sides, so alternate, and compared to the parallel lines, they're inside, so that's interior. Opposite on the, um, <coughs> opposite on the transversal, this transversal means alternate, inside the parallel lines means interior. So alternate interior, they must be congruent. And for the same reason, we can actually look at angle Q and angle T. For the same reason, angle Q and angle T along the same transversal, opposite sides of the transversal, inside the parallel lines means that they're congruent. They're alternate interior angles. So now I've finished my picture and I look around, I go, okay, I've got an angle, an angle, another angle, another angle, and then a side at the end. And I think, okay, does that fit any of the ones I have? Side, 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 no. Side, angle, side, no, I only have one, oh, one side, not two sides. Angle, side, angle, well, I have two angles, but the side's not between them, so it's not angle, side, angle. Angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, okay, that one works. So I've got something, now I just need to write it down, and I know that my final step is to prove by angle, angle, side. So here we go. Let's go through the long road of writing down what we just did. First thing is to write the given. And instead of actually writing it out, I'm just going to scribble here and say, that's the given. On your homework, I expect you to actually write it out. But for the sake of space and time for this video, we're going to uh, just pretend I did. Okay, the next thing that we did, the next statement that we s drew is that these two segments are congruent. QS is congruent to ST. And the reason was because S was the midpoint of QT. So it was the midpoint. You could write midpoint theorem if you want, but midpoint is just fine. That explains what your reasoning is. Then the next thing we looked at was angle R, or you could call it QRS. Now, with angle names, you can either angle it by the single letter that's there, but sometimes, like if you said angle S, there's four angles coming out of angle S. You have to be much more specific. So that if I would mean this angle, I'd say QSR. I couldn't just say angle S. But here, there's only one angle where R is, so I can call it angle R. You could call it QRS, but angle R is simple enough. So I'm going to say angle R is congruent to angle U. And I said that because of alternate interior angles, the parallel lines here. And likewise, the same, same reasoning for Q and T, angle Q it's congruent to angle T. Same reasoning, alternate interior angles. And now I remember, okay, I have an angle, angle, side. That was the reasoning, so I'm just going to write down the conclusion. These two triangles are congruent. Triangle QSR is congruent to triangle TSU by angle, angle, side. Now, I could do a thousand proofs, and each one would have a different uh, exact scenario on how it's solved. But and in the end, when you're trying to prove if the triangles are congruent, you're kind of come up with one of four things. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. If you can uh, do these proofs consistently, then you've gotten both of these lessons down.